there's four ways that you teach impulse control. The first is by practicing substitution and postponement. So an example of substitution is um, we say to a child, I know you would love to do that right now. I can, I can hear what you're saying. I see the, how badly you want to do that right now. I wish I could offer that to you. That's not available, but I can offer you this instead. So that's substitution. You, you give them some alternative. Postponement is when you say, I can see that you would love to do that right now. And you know, I really would love for you to be able to do that, but we're going to be waiting five minutes. Let's set a timer so we make sure that it's fair, that it's five minutes. So you delay a little period of time between the child's request or demand of what it is and the actual time that they get to do it. Another way to teach it is through games that involve stopping and starting actions. Uh, low organized games that we would have played when we were kids on a playground red light, green light, mother may I, hide and go seek. If you're going to play those types of games, however, in today's world, we would suggest that you play the cooperative version. So we don't want winners and losers because the challenge is if you play Simon Says with, with a child that lacks impulse control, they're the first ones that get to sit down because they lack the impulse control of waiting to hear Simon Says. So then what do they do? They get to watch all the other children practice the skill that they themselves need to learn and then they start to feel bad about things. So if you play the, the cooperative version, you would literally have two different games of Simon Says going on. So if the child doesn't um, moves at the wrong time in this game, they can then go join this game so that they're always practicing. The third way that you can begin to develop impulse control in children is by evaluating how you ask questions. So instead of asking questions that would involve a yes or no answer, ask open-ended questions that would require the child to stop and think and plan. So an example would be we're going outside. Instead of asking the child, would you like to get your coat on, which is a yes or no, to avoid all of that, we would say, we're going to be going outside. What would be the first thing you can think of that you need to do to get ready? What do you think are all the steps that we need to take for us to get ready? So now that they're planning they, and they have to stop and pause and really think about what is it that I have to do? That's called impulse control. And then the fourth way that you can um, teach impulse control is by practicing relaxation in whatever way that you practice relaxation, whether it's yoga or whether it's um, just some sort of mindfulness, deep breathing, or if it's uh, guided imagery or whatever it is. Life today has become this, this merry-go-round of activity and flurry where, it, come on, hurry up, we have to get your brother here. Come on, hurry up, we have to get, eat dinner. Come on, hurry up, hurry, hurry, hurry. And so life today for kids doesn't afford them the opportunity to even practice the power of that pause, that we're missing some major pieces um, to wellness in today's lens for kids. Mm -hmm.